Welcome to Medical Student Life in Japan, a podcast created by a teacher and a group of students at Nara Medical University. We are a small medical college in the Kansai region of Japan. This podcast has two great purposes. One is to share stories about being a medical student here in Japan, and also for our students to share fun ideas, opinions, and information about Japanese culture to people all over the world. Thanks a lot for listening. Welcome back to Medical Student Life in Japan, and today we have a very, very special episode. Uh, this is part two of a series. Uh, if you remember from a few weeks back, we had part one of this、uh, podcast series where our medical students answered some questions from a wonderful medical student studying in Cuba. Uh, she goes by the name of Ems, and she is from、uh, Belize, and she's been studying in Cuba for a few years.、Uh, in today's show, you will listen to the questions from our students, and Ems has taken some time to、uh, thoughtfully answer those, and her answers are just fantastic.、Uh, so, we really hope you enjoy this uh, podcast. Um, it's really what we had set out to do、uh, when we first started was to connect with people around the world, and we've done that in a very real way、uh, with this amazing student. So, thank you, Ems, for joining us, and we hope to one day、uh, do a live、uh, podcast together. So, for our audience,、uh, thanks as always for listening.、Uh, please you know, share and、uh, subscribe and do all those great things. And if you have any feedback, Uh, we're very happy to get that. You can leave voice memos、uh, through Anchor site、uh, or through Spotify, and we are very happy to get your feedback. And thanks again for listening. Enjoy the episode. Hello, all. Thanks for having me. I'm Ems, a Belizean Taiwanese third year medical student studying in Cuba. I'm also a classical musician who mostly plays flute, and I'm currently learning violin. If I'm not studying or practicing, you'd find me being a polymath that I am. I enjoy drawing, reading, musing, writing, and releasing an article on Saturdays, and also sharing a podcast every Sunday at Imperfectus. Will you work in Belize or Cuba or somewhere else? I am on scholarship, which includes a bond that I need to fulfill. So after graduating, I would work some years in Belize. Are there any challenges in studying abroad? I would think that in any new environment, and it was my first time in Cuba and first time studying abroad. There would definitely be unique challenges, and principally, I think it's language and adaptation to culture and routine. Language, because everything that you need to learn is in Spanish. You need to study a new language, learn a different academic way of expressing yourself, speech and writing. It can be quite an adventure of constant improvement each day and in each class. And then adaptation to culture. You're you're being away from home and what is familiar, so now everything seems new and there are places and habits that you need to do to live like comfortably, and you have like new cultures that you encounter too. In my case, where I have roommates of different countries, it takes time to get used to that, to get used to all the customs and different lifestyles of others, and you just. Tend to go back to having many moments of being homesick or nostalgic of your home country, and to add another layer of complexity as an individual, like you could be growing up and trying to figure out even yourself and how you want to live or become, and that was another challenge for me because I came to Cuba, at, you know, the sensitive age of eighteen years after all. What is typical day like at your medical university? As a third year student, usually three times a week, we would have like a morning ward service, where we like update the clinical observations of a patient or patients that we are assigned to. So we go to the hospital. In the same afternoon of the same day, 
we could have different classes, maybe up to three different classes until 4.30 or 5 p.m. Classes can be a lecture, uh, application, an application exercise or clarification of doubts or questions about the last lecture, or it can be evaluation. It's usually the Monday or Tuesday that we have the lecture or conference, and it's, bef- it's before the morning ward service, so it's very early. And then either Thursday or Friday, you would have the evaluations. Either it could be the same topic you covered at the beginning of the week or from last week. And once a week, as third year students, we need to do a like a night, night shift like ward service from like 6 p.m. So as you can see, like um, in third year, we have more active sessions in the hospital than in first and second year because we usually never have done so before. And I will ask you about education system. How long is medical college? What happens in each year? Medical college is six years in Cuba. And as foreigners, you take a pre-med year where the first semester is Spanish. And the second semester are subjects like biology, chemistry, physics, math, and at the high school level. So I did this pre-med year. So that means at the end, when I graduate, I actually complete seven years in Cuba. And so you can think the pre-med year as the zeroth year that kind of prepares you for studying in the Spanish language. So what happens in each year? In the first and second year, these are like the basic sciences, the theory at the base. So in first year, you learn like cytology, molecular biology, skeletal system, you learn um, each of the different systems actually until second year. Um, so including in first year, you also learn a very like national specific subject called general and integral medicine that sort of brings all the knowledge together. And we have different like outing activities, sometimes visiting the polyclinics during first and second year. In second year, you learn about the blood or immune system, the cardiovascular, digestive, renal system. You also learn microbiology, pathological anatomy, medical genetics, and psychology one. And also throughout, you would have electives. And it's only in first and second year that we take PE, as in physical education, and also different information technology courses. Like at the basic or general level for for like biology, you could say interpretation like statistics, methodology, maybe just like an intro for writing different academic papers. You also need to take English language, where for my case, because I come from a country that already speaks English, I I could be exempted from it until fourth year. But later, after that, then I still have to take the, you could say, like medical English. Then from third year onwards, it's like applied sciences. So now you're going to be more involved in the hospital and and actually interacting with patients. So in third year, we do clinical practices, internal medicine. We learn how to interpret images like x-rays. We do pharmacology one and two clinical lab studies, and psychology too. In fourth year, then it gets more interesting. We do different rotations and focus on pediatrics, general surgery, obstetrics, and gynecology. In fifth year, you do short and long rotations at the different wards. Short rotations are like ophthalmology, dermatology, orthopedics, urology, ear, nose, throat, that specialty. Then the long rotations include the subject of like general and integral medicine and also nat- natural and traditional medicine. You also learn about public health and psychiatry. In sixth year, you would repeat those rotations you did in those previous applied sciences year, like in internal medicine from third year, you would repeat some rotations for pediatrics, obstetrics, and gynecology, and general surgery from your fourth year, and then and then the subject of general and integral medicine of fifth year. And of course, you would have to take that final, final state exam. How can you get 
a medical license, what is required, or uh, do you have any procedure? In my simplest understanding, I would think it is that upon sixth year, you need to take a final state exam and then granting that you pass, then you get a license and perhaps the certificate. And well, because of the recent changes, the final evaluations might be done differently. And actually nearing my time, perhaps there can be new requirements. Usually there's like a theory and practical component for the final state exam. But to earn my license in Belize, I would still have to do an extra year of internship before I can serve as a general practitioner. And the last one is that, uh, why do you want to be a doctor? First of all, I want to say thanks for letting me have this question. I feel like this is just that million dollar question. And it could be the same common question for any profession or work in progress of anything, that fundamental why. But I feel like it should be reframed in a way like, what does becoming a doctor mean to me? But let's not get too philosophical, I guess. And I need to say first that the clarity and conviction and the way I could express this answer has matured since the first time I ever answered the same question. And it might continue to evolve, perhaps. So I want to be a doctor or becoming a doctor just serves like two, two key goals or, or essential things for me. Like the first, I feel like it is the important means, you could say, avenue or agency for me to solve a mystery in my life. I feel like the complex knowledge or the application experience might assist in this quest. The second is that it's a profession that resonates remarkably with two of my most important values, health and curious lifelong learning that can be applied daily. So I believe strongly that one of the most, the best, most unregretful investments you could be making should be put into your health because after going much through much internalized and deeper understanding, health is your past, present, and future. So it's all, all integrated in your life. It's that body, mind, soul influence. I feel like through this journey of becoming a doctor, I get to know myself better and others, like inside out, as in objectively regarding the like interaction, physio- physiological explanation of all those body organ tissue cell interactions, and even subjectively, like what does it implicate? What does it mean socially, interpersonally, and and how it affects quality of life? It's all connected, body, mind, soul. I'm so interested in all these facets of the field and I'm interested in what I'm trying to solve. So that's why I want to become a doctor. Thank you for having me on your podcast. And as like an added review, I enjoy your episodes a lot. I get to learn about how medical college is like in Japan and even of the culture, which is just as important. I think it just makes me constantly curious, appreciative, and enlightened in every episode.